Hi guys, Vex here. Welcome back to Building SHO. So with the uh, new update that I'm working on, I was working on some of the new custom classes, and I realized that, you know, I really don't play Scout very often, and I think it has to do with the vision distortion. And I just had an idea, and I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner. It's so obvious. But uh, anyway, in the updated SHO, it's going to come out to... I don't have a release date, but I'm just working on it. It'll come out when it's done. Uh, you may go to the scout area for the scout class and notice this piece of glass right here. And you may notice that out in the distance there is some uh, white concrete with stone buttons. Now... Uh, this is the field of view calibration area. You just stand on the glass, you face east, and you use the white blocks with stone buttons to adjust your field of view back to where you want it. Uh, the normal 70, so that's what I have here. Brought to you by the vision experts at Accuvex. All right, so this is a Scout rank 10 helmet. Uh, fairly powerful, lots of speed. Um, makes you super fast, but you don't maybe like the vision, so you stand on here. Right in the middle of the glass, you look up, you look straight to the east. So if you look there where it says, uh, right there it says uh, facing east, and then it's got the number, you can actually use the, the number 90, negative 90 right there to calibrate. Uh, so I can see the two little pillars over there with the buttons on them. So I just go to options, field of view, and ratchet that back down till where the buttons are on the very edge of my screen like that and I bet if we uh, that is back to basically effectively field of view 70 um, because if uh, your objective here is to get the stone buttons at the very edge of your screen like that uh, so if I get rid of this helmet bloop, and then go back to FOV 70, you will see, there we go, and voila, the stone buttons are at the very edge of my screen. And uh, for your convenience on all these scout hats, I went ahead and uh, wrote down the FOVs to reach what looks like 70 again. So it goes uh, 47, 48, there, most of them are two degrees apart however some of them are not like some of the ones back here 58 and then it goes to 60 63 and then 67 so um, not much change on this one but you know scout rank one it does still distort your view just slightly so if we went over here and got right in the middle of this again and then look straight east yeah you can see that I can see way more than those uh, like two blocks farther out than those pillars. So if you were really a stickler for it and you wanted back to no distortion whatsoever, you'd go back to like 67 there. And yeah, that's how that works. So um, maybe in this update, uh, more of you may be less dissuaded to pick the scout. Uh, I know for me, the like some people like the like the the vision thing like this, but when it normally looks like that. Um, I don't know, it, it, it weirds me out when I try to make jumps, because it's, it's not terrible like this, but uh, when you look down, I can't judge distance very well like this. Like, I don't know, like, how far can I jump? Can I jump from, like, this white block to that button or pressure plate over there? Yeah, I can, but it looks super far, so it, it really screws with my ability to do platforming. Um, but if I know, I can just quickly... Boom, there. Well, now I'm back to normal again, and that... Oh, yeah, now I can make that, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, I might uh, might rock some scout. The... Let's see. Uh, let's go back to my uh, mad scientist layer. And here we have the... Uh, these are the vampire... Uh, blocks. So here's the rank one vampire. That's a rank one vampire. Um, and then here, 
let's go ahead and get rid of all this off my head and go back to normal. There we go. Uh, so basically the blue helmet is Defender, the red one is Fighter, and the green one here is Scout. And then the black helmet is Vampire. And then on top of that, there's going to be uh, sort of like the final form of each of the three classes here. Uh, you're looking at Archer, uh, Arcane Archer, Paladin, and Berserker. So uh, that's what I'm working on uh, today. And I would like to finish those up. And then the next thing I, I need to do is I just want to add more dungeon content. And I think I'm done and ready to release after that. It just kind of depends on how much I want to get these custom classes done and operational. Um, the vampire's done. Uh, the others shouldn't be overly complicated. But, uh, I, yeah, yeah, just need to figure out how much more just dungeon content I want to put in the game before I release the update. I'd like to do more rather than less. I have uh, one thing that took a while is I had to redo all the loot tables in the game. Uh, however, something really cool is is a uh, what's in here? Oh, okay. Um, I think this is uh, the results of killing 60 skeletons, I believe. Uh, the gold drops are a bit higher, and uh, the weapon drops are fairly generous. Maybe too generous, but we'll see. Uh, the rare drops are working, and so basically, each uh, monster has its loot table, right? No duh. Uh, but I've figured out how to use nested loot tables, and this is another thing I don't know why I didn't do before. I just didn't... I was busy with other stuff, I guess. It just didn't click. Because um, I used to use nested loot tables in my Fallout New Vegas mods. Um, and nested loot tables are amazing because... Like, let's take the skeleton, for example. He's got his own flavor drops, the bones, the bows, the arrows, stuff you'd expect from a skeleton. But then on top of that, he's going to call up a common loot table, an uncommon loot table, and a rare loot table. And each monster calls these common, uncommon, rare tables at different rates. And for me to add, like, rare loot drops to the game, instead of going and editing literally every single monster in the game, which is actually quite a lot... Um, all I have to go do is edit the rare loot table because all the other ones call that that one. So it's really cool. It's really great. Um, so this idea came from the Super Hostile Online Discord, and they basically some people on there were asking for offhand charms that tweak your stats a little bit. Uh, so if you just didn't want to use a shield, you wanted something else in your offhand slot, um, you can do that. And uh, there are some in the in the game right now, more are coming, but uh, this one's obviously modeled after the bonuses you get for being a fighter. You get attack damage and you get knockback resistance. And so uh, the other ones do like speed, and the other ones the other one does uh, hit points. Um, so there's a charm of damage, charm of health, and a charm of speed right now, and I'll uh, add more to the game. But this dropped off a skeleton. It was a a one out of the 60 skeletons that uh, I processed in there uh, dropped um, dropped this. So there's food, there's XP, arrows are pretty good, uh, the bows are pretty sweet. Um, so the gold drops have been turned up. Um, the weapon drops are a bit more generous, so you're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 out of 60, so you're looking at uh, about a 1, 1 out of every 6 skeletons dropped a, a weapon, which, if you were fighting them, your weapon would last, whatever weapon you were using, even like a crappy wooden sword or wooden axe, is going to last longer than 6 monsters, so without even going back to town, you can make a, if you're careful, you know, make a steady profit of of wooden weapons. Now, that's not to say you want these. I mean, these suck. They're wooden weapons, but they're better than nothing. Um, 
one of the things I was trying to do uh, in this update is ease up a bit on like the basics. So you'll you should never feel like well I have nothing. You should be able to get back to you know you at least get some weapon. Um, there's even you know even off of skeletons uh, you're looking at a, once again a roughly one in six chance of getting some bread. Um, to give you like a partial refund on your food. But anyway, uh, that's what I've been working on uh, in the past like two days. Uh, I The loot tables took a long ass time to do, but now that I've got them set up again, it's going to be really easy on me. Um, like for example, like the, the skeleton again. Like if I think maybe the skeleton should be a bit more generous or a bit less generous, uh, I can just go in and tweak, you know, maybe turn up the weight of the uncommon and rare drops on the skeleton, or maybe turn down the weight of the common drops, for example. Um, and that, and, and, and I can do that without even restarting the server. I can actually edit the file on the server and just be like, bam, reload. And just reload the loot tables. I don't even need to restart the server for that. Uh, that is, that is great. Uh, well, anyway, um, I wanted to show that off. The the new hats are going to be uh, magenta, yellow, or I like to think of gold, personally. Um, but magenta, uh, gold, and orange. I think those look pretty good together. You know, I guess it's it's sort of like we have like the sort of a mage, like mage archer going on, and then we've got like the defensive melee guy, and then the offensive melee guy. Um, or maybe in the middle, sort of. Uh, and then the vampire is honestly kind of like a, I hate to say this, sort of your rogue. Uh, basically, sort of the, like these two, um, this guy right here is the, uh, the paladin, I should say, the like final form of the defender, the paladin, um, is going to be able to heal and tank. Whereas the Berserker is also going to be able to tank, but is more focused on uh, offense. Uh, and then the Arcane Archer is obviously going to be focused on range, and then the Vampire is very much focused on just getting into melee and doing craploads of melee damage. Uh, and the vampire is a class that requires you kind of to keep killing things to get your your special effects going. And if you ever stop killing and maybe getting like uh, skeletons with like knockback bows will screw you over because you'll get knocked around and you need to keep chaining chaining your hits and chaining your kills. And if you get interrupted, you're you're gonna die pretty quick. Um, so yeah, uh, vampire. Is I'd probably say a, a two. Ah! No! Oh, hold on a sec. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, let me put that back up there. It gives me something to look at while I talk. Uh, so the two things of the vampire is the lowest rank of vampire is probably going to be popular with people who just want to go farm relatively easy enemies because of the. Uh, vampiric regen effect. The later ranks of vampire are uh, much harder to get to, and I'm not going to show them off on camera. And you, they're going to be for like the hardcore like vampire class fans that uh, you need to chain your kills. There's a high degree of player skill required, and you're taking that into a dungeon as part of like a group to you know be the uh, basically your rogue. Uh, quite specifically, your rogue type, uh, black glass and all. Um, but yeah, uh, there is no. This is the closest thing to a mage, and we'll see. I have some ideas I want to do, trying to push what you can do with functions and command blocks. Uh, we will see. I uh, obviously Minecraft is not set up at all for magic spells and stuff. And I need to take into account like server lag and impact on performance when doing cra like too much crazy stuff. Uh, 
But one thing I would like to do with the Arcane Archer that I think is going to be really cool is regenerating arrows that just you can only you can use. So if you try to give them away, they'll disappear, but um, you'll always you'll always have like three of this or five of that arrow in your inventory, and they might refresh every ten minutes or so, or or shorter. We'll see. Um, so basically, being like an Arcane Archer means that you have like the slowly respawning supply of special arrows that do different stuff. Um, I think that would be awesome. The Paladin, uh, I'd like to give him like a slowly respawning supply of splash potions to heal and buff people with. The Berserker, well, uh, the Berserker may have... Uh, uh, you'll see. Uh, he may be similar to the Vampire that... Uh, when you kill stuff, you get some nice uh, buffs, and you're going to want to keep uh, chaining those. They may not be as uh, crazy as the vampire buffs, because the vampire buffs, especially for the rank 3 vampire, get kind of crazy. But the uh, Berserker is obviously a much safer class, because he's got more defense, uh, more, more health, and yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it. That's uh, sort of talk about uh, the the vision correction for the scouts. Uh, again, I don't know why I didn't do that sooner, but it actually makes like the the speed not be a, a much of a bother on those uh, class helmets because uh, it was kind of obnoxious. Um, I kind of wish like there was an option here. There was like a little checkbox right here, like how there's a lock right here. No, uh, there's a lock right here. Maybe put one like right here. That just doesn't let your field of vision change ever for any reason. Like, it just locks your field of vision down. Um, that would be nice, but, you know, it's not that hard when you get your class hat to just slide that a little bit. Whatever. Um, okay. Uh, so, field of vision corrections, talk about loot table, show off the charm, and then talk about the upcoming... Well, there's an existing class, it's all done here. And then uh, I'm going to start doing the Arcane Archer today. Uh, after I upload this video. So anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Until then, as always... Uh, oh, I, I put out a public Patreon post letting you know what I was working on. If you didn't see that, real quick. Um, right now, I'm working on Super Hostile Factorio, and I'm working on the Super Hostile Online 3.0 beta update. Then after that, I will be working on... Um, I'm already, I already am working on them, but fo really focus working on them. Uh, Super Hostile Isolation and Super Hostile Crossbone Coves, both single-player CTM maps where uh, Isolation has a special gameplay element where you can freeze to death, and Crossbone Coves is just a stock, um, classic-style CTM map. Although I may implement uh, some of the fun stuff I've developed in SHO, such as like shops, custom monster drops, and stuff like that. Uh, I think I think going forward, I should just make stuff very simply. Uh, some of my design philosophies. Just make stuff that I'm excited about and I find fun and share them with you guys. I think that's, that's probably the safest uh, route. Um, all of these ideas I have for these custom classes, like I'm excited for each one and I'm excited to play each one. Uh, so I think that's a pretty good sign. Um, anyway, I'll see you guys next video. Until then, as always, take it easy.